Ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to go, I just, I am just so excited for the word that you're about to hear. Um, the gentleman I'm going to bring up to you, he is an entrepreneur. Um, this is his catchphrase, expect greater. And that's why we use that song to bring him up. Because he is a dear brother to me and I just love to be an encouragement to him. And um, as they were coming in, I asked him what time did they leave their house. <laughs> they live up in Charlotte. I'm lying, but I'm just making up a whole lot of stuff. Uh, they live up in Charlotte. And I said, okay. I said, first I said, who drove? And he said, oh, you know, she drove. I said, oh, okay. I said, oh, so y'all left Charlotte, what, 10 minutes ago? <laughs> That's our inside joke. She knows I love her so, so, so much because she's from the great, uh, I can't even use that word to talk about the state she's from. But, uh, <laughs> no, she is from the great state of New Jersey. And um, it's just fun where you can have fun with people and enjoy one another and enjoy one another's company. Um, but it's just, I am humbled and honored that he would set aside his schedule to come every first, fifth Sunday of the year and speak to us. And um, I don't take it for granted. I do appreciate both of y'all very, very much, Amen. all that you guys do for our organization that we're both a part of, Global Ministries International, and um, for us at God's House. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up uh, Elder Surratt, and he is just going to bless us in the way that he does his business. And we are just going to enjoy the Lord in it. All right? All right, ladies and gentlemen, Elder L. Surratt! <laughs> I was going to say our middle name, but I left it alone. <laughs> it's always a blessing to come and be a part of God's house and with our friends um, that we've grown to, to love and uh, just be a part of and fellowship with and it's just a blessing to be here on today. Um, I had text Pastor Pender a few weeks back and I had a lot of calls, people asking me to come and preach on the fifth Sunday and while I was ex even, I get excited when you know people call me and ask me to preach but they would say, we need you to fifth Sunday. I'm like, no. And they looked at me strange. I'm like, you know, you didn't have to look at your calendar? No. I didn't, you know. But it's the fifth Sunday? No, I don't have to look at my calendar. Or well, just in case something comes through, you know, let, me, let us know in case something happens. I'm like, no, I got to preach fifth Sunday. And I had to immediately text Pastor Penn. I was like, I'm still on for the fifth Sunday now. I done, I done told quite a few people no. <laughs> so... But it is a blessing to uh, be here on today, and uh, I sat back and I was listening to Pastor Penner was talking about um, the tithing aspect coming from Deuteronomy, and I'm like, he's already preached my sermon, basically, uh, what, I, what I was going to talk about, but I had to sit back and smile, I'm like, okay, God, what can I say? <laughs> God said, well, he, 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 he kind of laid the foundation but somebody has to build it. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm going to do what thus saith the Lord. And uh, as I sit back and I'm praying and um, just, you know, getting my mind right. And God was showing me Tamiris, Tamaris, Tamaris. And, and God was saying, pay attention today. Pay attention today. This, this word is uh, strongly for you. Uh, it's for everybody, but God said, God told me to tell you to really pay attention on today. Uh, so I got to be obedient and do what God says. But there is a word today uh, coming from Deuteronomy, the first chapter, verse 11, coming out of the King James Version. And uh, just one verse, just one verse that, that I'll read. And we're going to do what thus said the Lord. Amen? Amen. And that's Deuteronomy, the first chapter. Verse number 11, Deuteronomy 1 and 11 out of the King James Version that I'll be reading from. And the word of God reads, The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are and bless you as he hath promised you. 
Again, it says, The Lord God of your fathers make you a thousand times so many more as ye are, and bless you as he hath promised you. Amen? Amen. Let us bow our heads. Merciful God, we come this morning saying thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to see this day. Thank you, Heavenly Father, just for waking us up this morning, clothing us in our right minds. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we come, Heavenly Father, just expecting a blessing, Lord, because you have blessed us to be in your house this morning. So, Lord, we come with empty hearts, Lord, ready for you to fill them, Heavenly Father. We come, Heavenly Father, with open minds, ready for you to fill them, Heavenly Father. Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. So, Lord, we come asking that you just touch us on this morning. Let us be able to leave out of here. But let us be able to go out and tell somebody that it was good Amen. to have been in the house of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Now it's preaching time. Amen. And, Lord, I desire that anointing that makes preaching easy and makes the gospel receptive. So Heavenly Father, it is my prayer that you take me out of self. Use me, Lord, like you never used me before. And Lord, if I get in the way... Hide me behind the cross and let the real preacher come forth. For no one came to hear from Sarat, but they came to hear from on high. So, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thy Redeemer. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen, amen. You heard the reading of the scripture coming from Deuteronomy 1 and 11. And for a topic on this morning, I would like to use, I'm getting what God promised. I'm getting what God promised. Um, you know, it's always a blessing that I stated earlier to come and share a word with my church family. And God's house, Christian church, is my church family. I look forward to coming here the first Sunday of the year. And we have a friendship like none others. But I know there are some things that I have to do that uh, Pastor Pender has, 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 has told me. Well, Pastor Pender prophesied through what God had told him. And I, I promise you, it's It's coming. It's coming. <laughs> I had to get some things out of the way, but it's coming. Awesome. It's coming. But as, as I was preparing this morning, I had been reading and studying Peter. And I'm like, yes, this is what I'm going to preach. I'm preaching about Peter, and I'm learning and studying Peter. And, and I was looking and re looking at Luke, the 22nd chapter of 31 and 32, where Jesus tells Simon Peter that, Behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. In other words, Jesus says that I have prayed that you will endure that which you're going through and, and use that as an experience to help others. How many know that God has granted the devil permission into our lives? And the devil has looked in and he saw the blessing that you're about to receive and, and, and he got mad. And, and when he looked in, he began to see some things that, that he knew he wasn't in control of. I'm going to preach in a minute, I promise. But, uh, and the devil got mad, but, uh, you know, I'm talking to Surrett right now. I don't know, but, I, but I've learned two things about struggle. Struggles mean that struggles are a sign that you have not been defeated. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Anytime you're struggling with something, uh, uh, you, you, you're moving. You're, 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 you're still alive. You haven't been defeated. And, but then also the struggle can mean there's a sign of a breakthrough is on its way. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever had to struggle lately? Good God Almighty. I'm... Has anyone ever gone through anything and you, you thought you weren't going to make it out? Has anyone ever had to just, just pray to God and it felt like God wasn't there and it felt like you weren't getting any answers and it felt like the more you prayed, the worse your situation became? Mm. I'm going to preach, I promise. Mm. But how many know the only way, you, the only way out was God by, by the hand of God? Mm -hmm. How many even know that God will bring you out? Mm -hmm. Now, the text this morning, is it's not coming from Luke, but it's coming from Deuteronomy. And this book is called the Book of Laws. And if you were to read your Bible, you would see that this is the second time that Moses is giving these laws. Mm -hmm. He's speaking to the people of God about the law, which is an excerpt from when he initially spoke it in the upper wilderness. Mm -hmm. Now, God raised Moses up to get the people out of bondage. Mm. I got to take my time. Mm -hmm. You know the story how they was in bondage for 430 years and God spoke and Pharaoh had to obey. Isn't that powerful when God speaks? Uh, uh, the enemy has to obey. Uh, well, when God speaks, uh, things have to shift. Uh, when God speaks, uh, things have to move. Uh, when God speaks, yes. 
Oh, my God. <laughs> we have to be able to listen. The Bible says God spoke and Pharaoh had to obey. Mm -hmm. You see, I know at times it felt like sometimes you were going to lose your mind, but God stepped in right on time. Mm -hmm. Times like you felt like you wanted to give up, uh, but God stepped in. I heard the songwriter say, uh, I could have been dead sleeping in my grave, uh, uh -huh. but he told death uh, to stand back and behave. Uh -huh. mm. Come on, sir. Come on. I had promised myself <laughs> that I was going to behave. But God said, that's not what I told you to do. Mm -hmm. God said, you give it to them like I gave it to you. Mm -hmm. So y'all know I got to be obedient. Got to be obedient. Now the scripture, I got to take my time. A scripture comes at a time when Israel had come out of Egypt. And it's at the end of the 40 year journey. All the ones that came out of Egypt are dead except for Joshua and Caleb. And, and Moses is talking to a new generation. Good God Almighty. Uh, a generation that only knows wilderness. And Moses has to reiterate the laws to the new generation. It's sad, church, when all you know is wilderness. You see, we have a whole lot of church folks with a wilderness mentality. A whole lot of church folks who feel like I'm in bondage. All I know is bondage. I can't get out anyway. All I know is a wilderness experience uh, and my mind is set in the wilderness. Right, right. Moses had to reiterate and let them know that, that, that there, there's something on the inside that, that has to come out. Um, ah, all they knew um, that a little bit of water came from a rock. Uh, uh, a little bit of manna came from heaven. Uh, but now Moses has to tell them that God is going to give them everything their fathers were promised. Mm. They had to get out of their comfort zone and go into a place where they knew nothing about. God Almighty. Even though they didn't know anything about it, God did. You see, I came, I came, I came, I came this morning to tell somebody uh, where God is leading you. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. And you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable with God. Uh, come on. We have too many church folks that want to be comfortable right where they are, but they want God to move. We have too many church folks that are comfortable right where they are, but they want God to bless them. We have too many church folks right being comfortable right where they are, but they want God to increase. God, give me a raise. God, bless me on my job. God said, in order for me to do that, I got to get you out of this comfort zone. Yes. Come on, sir. I'm going to preach in a minute, I promise. Mm -hmm. Ah, God, there's some things that your forefathers didn't receive that you are about to get. And I came this morning to tell somebody that you are about to get yours. The scripture tells us that for 21 years, they walked to the edge of promise, but they didn't go in. God Almighty. Ah, they walked in circles, but they didn't get in. How many of you have seen your blessing? Ah, but you still haven't received it. How many of you have been so close that you can reach out and touch it, but you didn't get, couldn't quite grab it? Almost, but not quite. Ah, I told you I'm getting what God promised me but I have to learn that many people don't understand how that can be true you see sometimes God will show you a better future God God will show you what you can achieve but in order for you to get there you got to get out of that comfort zone well some people were sitting back just trying to reach for it and God said if you move your feet I'll give it to you but all you're doing is reaching and reaching and reaching God said if you want really want it you got to move your feet but God if I move my feet I'm not sure what's there God said I got you do you trust me See, oftentimes we got to trust God when we, can't, trust when we can't trace him all the time. We got to trust him in the midst of our struggles. We have to trust him when he's not, when, when we feel like he's not there. Wow. Come on, sir. But the problem is we don't want to trust him. We can't see beyond our grasp. God has so much more in store for you, but you're comfortable. Oh, I'm going to get you uncomfortable this morning. Well. So God's told me to tell you that, that he wants to give you uh, uh, what he's promised you. And in order for me to for order for me to get you to understand, I had to have a little talk with Moses. And Moses gave me three points to share with you, and I'm going to share them with you, and we're going to get out of here. The first thing Moses wanted me to tell you was God had to change your circle before he can change your setting. Lord have mercy. Y'all missed a good place to shout right there. So God had to change your circle before he can change your setting. 
God has to get some folks from around you by expanding your circle with those whom you have a kindred spirit. It's in the scripture. I'm not making it up. It's right there. It says, make you a thousand times so many more as ye are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In other words, God is going to multiply. I heard Pastor Penner said it this morning. Mm -hmm. God is going to multiply. But he has to surround you with people who think like you. He has to surround you with people who want the same things as you. In order to get the promises that God has for you, you have to get rid of, get rid of that doubt, that jealousy, that unbelief, and that hatred. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't take the same people with you into the new place that God has promised you. Come on, sir. Oh, I'm going to put it in park right there because I need to talk to you about something. I, I say you can't take the same people with you uh, to the new place that God has for you. You know why? Because the same people that acted a fool back here, when you get to the new place, they're going to act a bigger fool. Mm. Everybody's not going to be happy for that promotion. Everybody's not going to support where, you, where God is taking you. That's why God has to take some people from you. Mm. Oh my God. You see, you, 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 you're going, when, people, when you take the same people with you, you're going to get the same results. <laughs> you see, somebody ought to be able to thank God for moving folks out of their life. <laughs> ah, see, I know that your cousins, your aunts, and your uncles, uh, but sometimes you ought to be thankful that God moved them out of your life. Uh, because it can be the family members that's telling you that you can't do it. <laughs> it can be the family members telling you, uh, well, nobody else in our family has done that. <laughs> it can be the family members that's da talking down to you. Um, why you want this? <laughs> nobody else has it. <laughs> why are you striving to be all of this? <laughs> nobody else in our family has it. <laughs> you have to be able to say, look at here, <laughs> I know what you're saying, <laughs> but God God has already shown me, and when I get there, I may come back for you. Oh, my God. Sometimes you have to be the example in the family to let them know, I'm trusting God. I don't care what you say, but I'm trusting God. I know y'all don't really care for me. I'm trusting God. Have you ever tried to pay a, pay a, pay a bill with somebody's opinion? Come on, sir. I know that went over somebody's head. <laughs> God has to change your circle so that he can change your setting. He has to move some folks before he can move you. Mm, mm, mm. He has to move some folks before he can move you. I don't know about you, but I'm getting what God promised. I'm getting what God promised. I told you, the first thing Moses told me to tell you that God would change your circle in order to change your setting. But the second thing Moses said, God will guarantee you help. Lord have mercy. Yeah. This new generation that Moses is talking to, as they were in the wilderness, they were picking up any and everybody along the way. <laughs> and all they were doing was messing up God's plan. <laughs> you can't mess up God's plan. How do I know? Let me tell you. You see, I remember one time we was flying back from L.A. and the plane was delayed because of too much weight. They had to balance some things out. Mm -hmm. And we were sitting there waiting on the tarmac trying to figure out what was going on. They kept saying it was overloaded. It was, the, the weight wasn't right. It, it was shifted the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And I began to like, okay, well, they need to get this fixed because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm new to flying and I'm getting kind of nervous. But I noticed that the, the stewardess and the, 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 the pilot, they weren't, they weren't you know, nervous at all. Everything's going to be all right. Just calm down. And I began to think about that. And I began to think that, that and when, when God is, is, is elevating us, when God is moving us, when God is taking us to that next level, we want to bring everybody with us. And you wonder why your plane is not taking off. Good God Almighty. It's because you're weighted down. Uh, it's because you're holding on to some things and some people that God has already released you from. It's because you're holding on to some opinions of people who, of people's opinions about you that, that, that's not allowing you to take off. You're watching everybody else take off. You're watching all these other planes taxi and get on the runway and fly. And you're looking out the window going, why can't we take off? God said, if you let go of some things, I would allow you to fly. If you let go of some things, I will have you soar. If you let go of some things, I'm going to take you to places of unbelief. If you let go of some things, watch what I can do. God said, I'm going to send you help, but in order for me to truly help you, you got to let go of some things. Mm. God is going to give you some help because you have been in the wilderness and that's all you know. 
That's all you've been associated with. That's, that's all you hung out with, but that's okay because God says, I'm here to help you. It's in the scripture. I'm not making it up. Moses said that his prayer is not only for the Lord to multiply, but it's for the Lord to bless you. Mm, mm, mm. I know you've gone through some terrible storms and those storms have the storms you have picked up, they picked up some of those who thought they could help you. You see, whenever you're going through some troubles, you'll call on everybody else to try to get help. And you don't realize the ones you're calling on, they are not helping you, but they are hindering you. The ones you're calling on, they're not praying for you, they are praying against you. But the ones you're calling on, ah, they have that they can help you, but they don't want to help you because if you get above them, then they're going to get all mad and upset and everything. And you got a whole lot of haters out there. But I hear, I'm here to tell you when God sends the help God's going to send the right person to help you God's not going to send that person that's jealous God's not going to send that person that's envious God is not going to send that person that has so much hatred for you but God is going to send somebody that can lift you up in your time of need does anybody need lifting up does anybody need God just to come right now and just lift them up? Does anybody need God to come in and just take them to that level where God says, you know what? I know you're unfamiliar with it, but because of who I am, I'm going to be with you every step of the way. God is going to provide some help like you never thought of. I know you've been in the wilderness in all these years and that next level is unfamiliar to you. But I came to let somebody know that even though your promise is unfamiliar to you, it is familiar to God. And all you have to do is trust him. You should have a praise like never before. A praise that says after this storm, I'm going to trust God like never before. I know during your storm, you thought you lost all you had, but you didn't lose God. I know during your storm, it felt like you almost threw the towel in. But God said, I got you. Aren't you glad God didn't give up on you? I came to let you know that God says he's going to move you without what you thought you needed. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, my God. I had to learn this the hard way. You see, I love my parents. I love my family, aunts and uncles. But God said, I, 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 I'm going to move you without them. But God, I, I need, I need, no, God said, no, 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 no. They don't understand where I'm taking you. Mm -hmm. And if they understood where I'm taking you, they would support. Oh, my God. Come on, sir. So God said, I have to remove them in order for you to get where I want you to go. Yeah. You, you don't need them right now. Uh, they, they love you, but they're, they're, they're hindering you. Sometimes, church, I got to let you know that, that yeah, you, you love mom and daddy and aunts and all. You love all your family, but they can't go where God is taking you. Mm. Tell somebody in your family, yeah, I'm going to be the first millionaire. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. Mm. Tell somebody in your family, I'm going to start my own business, and they're going to look at you like you're crazy because nobody in your family's ever done that. Tell somebody. Then God is going to say, stop telling them. Just do it. Mm. God said, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to raise you up. Yeah. And when I raise you up, they're going to know it's me, not them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, big mama prayed for you. She prayed that you didn't get in trouble, but, but I'm going to take it to another level. Yeah. Mm. It doesn't mean that you think you're better than anyone. It means that, you know what, I'm trusting God. Mm -hmm. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I, I'm going to do what they said I couldn't do. Mm -hmm. Am I making sense? Am I preaching all right this morning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> During the storm, God is going to send somebody. God is going to move you without who you thought you needed. How many of you are ready to get what God promised you? You see, I know you've been going through a lot, <clears throat> but it's time to get what God promised you. You see, God had to change your circle before he changed your setting. He said he would guarantee you help. But the last thing Moses told me to tell you, that God will deliver his promise. Good God Almighty. The scripture says, that latter part, it says, as he hath promised promised you. This new generation didn't have any anticipation because all they knew was wilderness. In other words, they were used to living beneath what God had in store for them. Mm -hmm. mm, mm, mm. Oh my, I love this part right here. It's a shame that we have Christians just like that. Christians who, who believe, who, who become so used to living beneath 
what God has for them that, that all they know is struggle. They think struggle is natural. They think struggle is normal. If I'm not struggling, nothing is happening. They think, oh, this is the way it's supposed to be. I'm supposed to be broke, busted, and disgusted. But I came this morning to let somebody know God will deliver his promise. God will. I get so frustrated when I hear people talk about I'm striving but things aren't happening the way I'm the, the way I want them to things aren't going the way I want to don't you know we serve a God who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that you can ever ask or think mm -hmm. but yet you want to stay stuck right in your little comfort zone mm -hmm. you don't want to move out of your comfort zone huh? you don't want God to do anything you, you you want God to move when you want him to move and how you want him to move huh? uh, you want God to make it easier for you huh? God said if you really want me in your life huh? It's not going to be an easy journey. If you really want me to elevate you, you got to get out of that comfort zone. If you really want me to deliver you the promises to you, you got to make a move. You got to let some of those folks go. You got to say goodbye to some of those folks. You may have to disappear for a while. Yeah, you can call and text them, hey, how you doing? I'm good. But you don't have to hang around them people. But Pastor Surratt, you don't understand. Um, I, my mama cooks this big meal on Sunday morning. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm not saying don't go to your family and don't visit, but sometimes when God is elevating you, you have to just sit and listen to God. Listen to God. I know Big Mama can cook, yes, sir. but sometimes you may have to go through that drive-through at KFC and go home and eat your meal in peace. Amen. Mm. Amen. But you want to go to Big Mama's house? You know they're gonna be arguing, fussing about something. Mm. The food is good. But before you leave, somebody's going to say something to tell you that you can't. Mm. Don't look at me like that. Mm. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Mm. God says, I know you're struggling. But God said, I am with you. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm convinced by his word that he has more in store for me. I, I don't know about you. I, I came to let you know that you weren't supposed to. Just to keep going and, and being broke and frustrated and all this stuff. God has a better way. You got to understand that better is on the way for you. Yes. You have to believe it though. The Bible says that the old generation had died. But God left some old school members there with the new generation. The Bible says that Joshua and Caleb were still around. And they were from the old generation. But they had a brand new spirit. Good God Almighty. Ah, with this new spirit helping to guide the way. I can hear God say. You're going to get what I promised you Your struggle is over The devil is a liar I know you've been in the wilderness for a long time But your struggle is over I know that you have experienced a mess But I came to let you know That your mess is turning into a miracle I came this morning To tell somebody The mess that you've been going through God is getting ready To turn all of that around And you're going to have a testimony like never before I came to tell somebody the devil thought he had you But here comes your immediate blessing I came to tell somebody The devil wanted you to throw the towel in But here comes your immediate blessing The devil thought he had your finances He thought he had your children He thought he had your job and your family But here comes your immediate blessing I'm so glad I said I'm so glad he changed my circle and provided me with help. Why? Because I'm getting what he promised. Yes. Come on, sir. This is the year you're walking into God's promises. Mm -hmm. This is the year you're walking into God's promises. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people set New Year's resolutions and things that they want to achieve and this, that, and the other. But one of the things that you should set your mind on is being obedient to God's word. Mm. I didn't say perfect, mm. but being obedient. When God speaks, you ought to be able to hear his voice. Mm. When God speaks, you ought to be able to hear his voice over mama's voice, over daddy's voice. Because mm. oftentimes, I'm just keeping it real, they'll tell you that you can. But God says, trust me. God, God, God says, trust me. And when you begin to trust God, God will take you to some unfamiliar places. Huh? Uh, but when you get there, you realize God has already set in place everything that you need. Amen. Have, you, have you ever been somewhere? <laughs> Just been traveling and, 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 and the, it, the, it may have been storming outside. It may have been snowing. It, it may have been some rough weather. But when you got there, you arrived safely and everything was intact. That's God. That's God. 
and that don't that that it's, it, it doesn't always apply to only applies to just going to work. Well, I got to get to work no matter what comes in my way, rain, snow, sleet, whatever. I'm going to work. Uh, God said, why not have that kind of of of, of, of reverence toward me? We have to be mindful that God <clears throat> wants to give you everything your forefathers didn't get. Mm. I'm getting what God promised me. Mm. And I can't allow Silly Sue and Goofy Greg to stop <laughs> what God is doing in my life. I can't allow that. God has been too good to me. He, he's blessed me with too much. I, 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 God said, if you keep moving, I'm going to keep supporting you. Mm. But God, there's nobody around me. You don't need nobody around me. Me and you are the majority. I got you, Surat. Mm. But God told me to tell you, he has you too. Mm. God told me to tell you, he has you. Mm. I'm getting what God promised me. Mm. I'm getting what God promised me. Mm. And I know you're, you're sitting, you're listening, you're going like, well, I, I need a little bit more. I, I need more about what God has promised me. And, and I'm so glad you want some more because I got to close this. But 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 I, I hear Joshua uh, and I hear Caleb uh, and, and they wanted they wanted to help me preach a little bit. So I heard Joshua saying a prayer. Joshua began to pray the father. I stretch my hands to thee. No other help. I know if thou withdraw thyself from me. Where or oh, where shall I go? Caleb said, well, I got a little more to add to it. And Caleb, I heard Caleb singing. He's sweet. I know him. Storm clouds may rise. Strong winds may blow. I can tell the world wherever I go that I've found a savior. And he's sweet, I know him. Well, I came to add a little more to it. I may have told you the story. If you heard it, act like you never heard it before. But I remember back in 2021, then I was riding down the highway, just got off work, and I had a bad wreck. And I didn't quite understand because I woke up in the back of an ambulance. Not understanding what was going on, not realizing that I had blacked out, not realizing I had totaled my car. I found myself in the hospital, but I knew there was a God because when I saw the pictures of the car and I talked to the officer, he said, I don't know how you survived. I began to smile, Pastor Pender, because I knew it was nobody but God. God said, I still got you, Surratt. I got some promises for you. I'm going to bring you out of this. I six days in the hospital. They're running all kinds of tests. MRIs, EKG, EEG, CTs, all these alphabets. And everything came back negative. The doctors begin to scratch their heads. They say, we don't know what happened to you. We can't find anything anything wrong with you. We're going to run some more tests. I'm saying quit running all these tests because God has me. And then while I was in the hospital I had a seizure for a couple of days. Didn't quite know where I was, who I was. But God did. Y'all don't I remember the doctor, the, the, the doctor coming in, and I'm asking her, can I leave? She said, we need more tests. I'm looking at the machines, trying to figure out why I'm hooked up to all this stuff. And my wife said, well, you had a seizure. I said, who had a seizure? No, not me. They said, you had a seizure. And I began to think, I said, God, you got this. God said, I have to bring you through some things in order for me to get you to where I want you to go. I said, well, God, the promise, you promised me that you would be with me, that you would never leave me. Six days later, I came out of the hospital. Doctor still scratching the head. Couldn't find anything wrong. Still scratching the head. It wasn't until a year later, they finally figured out what I had. And it was a slight viral infection. A year later, they finally figured this out. But I remember, Pastor, I was riding past what the wreck I had. And I began to look over at the telephone pole that told my car. And on the radio came a song, a a song by the Dale Phonics, and a song said, Didn't I blow your mind this time? And I heard God say, Surat, I know you like music. Don't listen to those words, but listen to my words. And I heard God says, In order for me to get you to where I want you to go, in order for me to get you to give you the promises, I had to blow your mind. And I came this morning to let somebody know God is about to blow your 
mine. Well, sir, I don't want to go through no ranks. Well, sir, I don't want to be hospitalized. I didn't come to tell you you're going to have a wreck. I didn't say you'll be hospitalized, but I came to let you know when you walk down past your in your past and you look where God has brought you from, you ought to have a praise like never before. You ought to have a praise that says, didn't I blow your mind this time? The times you thought God had left you, God told me to tell you, didn't I blow your mind this time? I don't know about you, but I'm getting everything God promised me. Has God blown anybody's mind lately? Uh-huh. You ought to just be giving God praise mm-hmm. just for being here this morning. Yes. Yes. Somebody didn't make it. Somebody didn't make it. But God touched you and allowed you to see this day. That's enough to give God praise. You ought to give God praise for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. Yes, yes, yes. Because yes. he didn't have to do it. Uh-huh. But aren't you glad that he did? Glad that he did. Yes, aren't sir. you glad that he did? Yes, sir. We serve an awesome God. Yes, yes. And if you're true, if you truly want the promises of God, you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Amen. Mm. Because God's going to move some folks. He has to change your circle before he can change your setting. Mm. God is going to change some things. Mm -hmm. God is going to move some people out of your life. Just so he can do what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. And when he begins to move people, he's going to bring some help. Mm -hmm. He's going to bring some help. God, I need, I need, no, God, so I, I'm, go, I'm going to help you. God will bring help. Mm-hmm. And when he brings the help, he's going to give you all that he's promised you. Mm-hmm. I'm getting what God promised me. Well, and I want you to get what God has promised you. Mm-hmm. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. You can't be afraid. God wants to take you to levels of unbelief. But you're busy trying to bring, <clears throat> bring everybody along with you. God didn't tell you to go get Susie and Jane and everybody. <laughs> God says go. Go. But God, you know, I got to bring my girlfriend and, and my guy friend. And we get, we get, no, God said, no, 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 no. They don't understand the level that I have you on. Mm-hmm. That's the reason why a lot of you are stuck right where you are. <laughs> Because you don't understand the level God has you on. You're looking at the window, looking at all these planes take off. And you're trying to figure out why is it my plane taking off? God said, you got to get rid of some baggage. Mm. You got to lighten your load. Mm. But God, Goofy Greg, no, Goofy Greg, he's fun over here. But Goofy Greg can't go where I'm taking you. Mm. But God, you know, Silly Sue's my, no, Silly Sue's, I know that's your girl. She's, she's fun for the cookout, but she can't go where I'm taking you. Amen. It's not that you're better than anybody, but it's because of the God that's better in you. Yes. It's because of what God has placed on the inside of you. And God wants more for you. Trust God. Trust God. Amen. I'm through. Um, I'm through. I'm through. I pray that something you've heard on today inspired you to trust God, to keep God first, to allow God to really come into your life. And I pray that you'll be able to go out and tell somebody that it was good to have been in the house of the Lord. Amen.